recording. Get into the right stuff. The right stuff. O O O O R E O. It's in the middle. The white stuff. Yes, Nugget. We all love you. Okay. So happy Halloween, everybody. Enjoying the snow and the, the cold. Great way to start October, huh? Craziness. Um, remember, there is a test. Uh, the test is opening tomorrow, or actually later today. Um, it's due on the 9th, but I believe it is opening up today, so um, after class. Just check the schedule. Um, Saturday at noon. So you have until, um, and then you have until Monday at midnight to take the test. So uh, just a reminder for everybody. So, and it's on chapters uh, six, seven, and eight. So this year in chapter nine is um, about hypothesis testing. And this is where we actually start to use statistics. We've done all this other stuff and we haven't actually used any of it yet. Um, you've just kind of been learning uh, the tools. It's kind of like um, you've taken uh, 10 years of, you, you took from kindergarten through eighth grade where you learned all the basics of math and they said, okay, now we're gonna teach you algebra. So that's kind of like what happened here where we taught you all basics and now we're um, actually getting into the math part of how it's used. Uh, this is called implied statistics where we make, or sorry, inferential statistics, my bad. Uh, this is where we make decisions, we infer ideas based upon what we've found. And um, so we have to make hypotheses. Now, um, that's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted, but I have no idea why I purchased Camtasia. So um, when we're making a hypothesis, we have the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. All right, and the null hypothesis has to have an equal sign in it. So you're going to have equals, greater than or equals, and less than or equals. Okay, so because the equal sign has to be in this. And then the alternative always has everything else. So this is less than or greater than, which we just write as not equal to. We have greater than and we have less than because all things have to be covered and because it's a binary system. So it's either this or this, okay? And in some cases, we would only, we might only see the equal sign, but, and then we would just see the alternative as what we're really interested in. This is usually what we're trying to prove, okay? Um, and we can't say that it's definitely true, but we can say that it's probably true based upon the information that we've gathered. Okay, because remember we have we're dealing with samples and we're dealing with sample means and sample proportions. And based upon on those samples, this is what we think is true. Because we are assuming that this was came out to be false. Okay. So it's kind of like um in uh in um um what call it? in in law we have guilty and not guilty we don't have guilty and innocent we have not guilty okay and it's usually not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt or not guilty um i can't think what the other one is for civil cases uh uh but they're looking and that they're not saying that you didn't do it bye baby love you Alex, good luck on your driving. All right. So we're not saying that this is true. We're just saying we believe that this is false. So we're not. We're saying that you're either guilty or you're not. 
Circuit where nowhere, nowhere did anybody say that O.J. Simpson was innocent. They just couldn't prove that he, they didn't think that they proved their case that he killed his wife. Okay. Um, oh, I just noticed that that kind of actually looks like a less than and a greater than sign. Um, so that's what's going on. Okay. We have, we are, and we have error built in called alpha. We talked about alpha last week where we had our um, confidence intervals and on either end, we had, this was our confidence level and this was our error. This was alpha over two. Okay, same thing is going on here. We have this error that's built in. You know, we're 5% error, which is common, okay? Because again, it's about two standard deviations. So we believe that, and if things fall into this space, then we assume that the mean or the proportion can't be true because we're dealing with samples. And we know that to get into this area is very, very hard. Okay, especially so if we have get standard deviations more than more than two standard deviations away from our sample mean or proportion, it's very difficult. So that's why we are assuming that um, we reject the null hypothesis that you know it's equal to less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, and assume that this may be true. Okay, we so we're not accepting this; we're just rejecting this, and we therefore infer us inferential statistics that you know our values over here this may be wrong and that therefore this may be the actual thing that's happening we don't know what the, the true thing is but we know that it's not that we believe that it's not this so in the first problem i'm going to skip problem one because it's just choosing um uh, hypothesis testing and I'm back to it uh, where we have um, uh, okay here problem four where we actually get into the math so we're talking about uh, smoking and they think that the mean of smokers um, varies uh, but the standard deviation is the same, and they are trying to decide whether smoking starts at least 19. So greater than or equal to 19. And if we reject that, we believe that people start smoking younger than 19. We don't know when they start smoking, but we don't believe it's 19 or older. We believe it's less than 19. So whatever age over here. And so this can be a one-tail test. where the error is only on one side. We can have a two-tail test where we, where we have, if we have equals, our error is on either side. Again, we don't know which side it's on. We just know that it's not here in the middle. So it's the least useful of the three. And uh, these two are more useful because if we can say that it's less than or equal to, then our error is over here that no we think it's higher or if it's greater than or equal to we say no we think the error is lower but when we're dealing with not equal then we don't know which side it's on and it doesn't really help we haven't really told ourselves anything we just know that it's not that thing um so it's very while it's simple you know because we have equal and not equal it's not as useful as the other two um so if they were saying, if they were predicting the presidential election and we're like, okay, you know, we think uh, Joe Biden is going to get 57% of the vote and they do a test and they find out that it's not 57% of the vote. We don't know, is it less than 57% of the vote? Is it more than 57% of the vote? We know nothing. Whereas they said, we think it's greater than or equal to 57%. And we find out that, no, it was less than 57% of the vote. So that tells us that, okay, we believe it's less than that. You know, and again, 57% wouldn't be a useful thing because you need, you know, 
it has nothing to do with how the popular vote anyway. <laughs> but um, if it was each state, you know, we might say that he, we think he's going to get 50% or more, and we could determine no by testing. We think he's going to so 50% or more means he's going to win, and they test and they find no, he's going to get less than 50%, so he's going to lose that state. And so that's where the, that's what the number that they care about is that 50%. Um, but you know, we get a lot of these polls asking us, you know, how many things there are, and they do their confidence intervals, and they look at, you know, is that number true? You know, it's like, oh, well, this person's going to get 70% of the vote. You know, it's 70 to 30. But you know, who cares if it's more than 50? Then it's more than 50, and that's really all that matters. Um, and so that's what they do. That's how they can predict the winner on such small margins, like with you know, a few percentage of the towns reporting because they can look to see, you know, how did these towns do? And they use that to extrapolate and say, well, we assume the rest of the towns did the same thing. Um, and therefore, and then, or maybe these are the larger towns. So, you know, towns around it all seem to, seem to do the same. And we, we take some from different spaces so we can say, we project this person who won this state just by looking at, you know, five percent of the reporting is in, and so they can they'll do that very quickly. And the reason they want to do that is because everybody wants to be first. Okay, you need to be first now in news. You don't have to be right. You have to be first, because if you're first, you can put things right. You know, you can be you can make things true by saying it early enough and having people, especially in elections, having people go, oh, all right. Um, if that's the way it is in, in, on the East Coast, the West Coast is going to follow along. And so that's why they really have, shouldn't be doing that, but they do it anyway, because um, they're bad in general. My weekly media rant. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to, chapter, to problem one here. And there, notice it goes all the way down to part J, but they're all exactly the same question. You know, uh, private universities' mean tuition cost is more than $20,000. So you need to figure out, is this the null or the alternative more than 20000 Okay. And then from there, figure out which side, which one it is. Well, more than is just greater than. So this here is the alternative. So we have to find the alternative in over here, which is more than, so that gives us this one. And then we can use the uh, mean. Uh, the other thing that would be easy is because they say the word mean, so you can scratch out anything that has proportions. So P remembers for proportions, so there's four of those, they're gone. We can then um, look at where we have more than, and so this is less than, this is less than or equal to, that doesn't make any sense. We can't have equal signs on that side. Um, this is greater than, that's a proportion. Uh, this is less than, this is equal. We can't have that one. So it's either going to be this one or this one. And more than is than, so that gives us our answer. And that's what all of these are. Um, they're either going to tell you the null hypothesis, because there's an equal sign in it, or they're going to tell you the alternative because there isn't an equal sign. There's going to be a mean. So you can figure out which one is the means and which one's the proportions. Um, let me find a proportion one. So proportions, obviously, this says mean. This has a percentage. So that's going to be the thing, that, the key for finding um, the whether it's a proportion or a mean is if it says mean or if it says percent. So can look at that. It says here the mo at most at most 60%. So at most means less than or equal to. So that's why we so we have the equal sign. So we've been given the um, alternative. We've been given the null hypothesis. So we scratch out anything that is a mean. So that one, that one, that one, and that one, and that one. One, two, three, four. We get rid of those four, so now we have the proportions. We have this one, this one, this one, and this one. Well, that has doesn't have an equal sign at all, so that one's gone. This one has an equal sign. 
this one has a greater, so this one can't be it. So it's going to be this one or this one. And it doesn't say equals 60%. It says at most. And notice even here, we have equals and greater than. So that's why this can't be true, because we don't have the less than part. So we only have one possible answer. And that's what how you're going to do all those problems in A, in, in part one. Um, this thing here uh, to ask about the error. These two actually ask about the error. And um, so a type one error is that when we believe it's um, so hold on uh, believes that more than 20% of evergreen faculty uh, attend opening midnight showings of the latest Harry Potter movie. I surveyed 84%, found that 11 attended the midnight showing. The type 1 error is con uh, concludes that. So we think it's right when it's actually uh, wrong. Is um, the error is type 1 error. So we, we assume that this, because we have more than here. Um, uh, so we're assuming that this is true when it's actually false. So these two should this thing here should be the same. So we're believing this to be true. So the type one error is that we believe this to be true when it's not. Type two error is the other. We believe that it's not true when it actually is. So uh, and that's what type two error. Is. So we have those two things. Um, those are the two kinds of errors that you can have. You can, uh, again, in law, you can uh, say somebody is not guilty when, in fact, they're guilty. Or the opposite, you can say that they're guilty when, in fact, they're not guilty. And both things happen. All right. And because people are infallible and uh, or people don't do a good job at their uh, prosecuting. So that's how those things occur. All right. So. The, the rest of these problems are all, and there's only seven of them, and yes, there's lots and lots of parts, but it's really all the steps for solving hypothesis testing. There's a couple of, there's a bunch of steps. So, wrong button. I don't need you, Siri or Alexa or whoever you are. So step one, read. I wonder if the, oh, there's a text in here. I'm going to put text. Ooh, look at all the colors. Fancy. Enough. So step one, read. <laughs> step two, read again. OK, but this time, look for val variable uh, important information. OK, because you should just read it just to get an idea of what's in there. Second time, you're reading it to pull out the information. Uh, three. What are your what are your values really? You know. It's been given to you. Do I have X bar? Do I have uh, P? Do I have standard population standard deviation? Do I have sample standard deviation? What's the sample size? So all those things there, you know, uh, means standard deviation. You know, sample or population, uh, sample size, um, portion, uh, X and N. You know, all those little pieces that we that are there. What what do they what did they give us? Write it down. Okay, so that helps us figure out what kind of pest do we have.
Is it a Z test? Is it a T test? Is it a one proportion Z test? Is it a two proportion Z test? Is it a two mean uh, T test? Is it a two means uh, Z test? So we have all of these kinds of tests. Is it a chi squared test? Is it a uh, is it an ANOVA table? You know, we have lots of tests that we're going to look at. We have chapter nine, ten, eleven, and thirteen. So there's four different there's different tests that are going to occur. Chapter twelve is on regression. So we do that before we do chi square and ANOVA tests. But there's so there's all these tests that you could possibly do. So what kind of test are we doing? All right. We then you know do the math. And in our case, it's just plugging the values into our calculator and getting a result. Sorry, before we do five, we have to do this one. We have to, this is gonna be six. Um, null and alternative hypotheses. What is your hypothesis? HO, H0, and HA. What are your null and alternative hypotheses? Do the math. And then seven, we're interpreting the math. You know, what is the solution? Uh, eight, what does it mean? Okay, so we put it back in terms of the questions that were asked, okay? And so to get a solution, we need the p-value. And, and in here, we need, oh, this up here, we're gonna have what is alpha, oops. they're going to give us alpha. What is our alpha? So usually it's 5%, but it could be anything else. So those are the pieces. So what is the p-value? We compare it to alpha. Um, is the p-value less than alpha? It was really all we care about. All right. And then what does all this mean? In terms of our um, problem, put it back into some kind of reality. So there's lots of steps, so that's why seeing lots of things here shouldn't scare you. Because the first two are what are the null and alternative hypotheses. So it says at least 19. Well, at least 19 means greater than or equal to 19. So that tells us that it's this one. Our B has to be the other half, everything that's left. So the only thing that's left is less than. So that's where we get these two pieces. Part C says, what does X bar mean? They always ask that. You should know that by now. I'm not even going to bother this here. What kind of distribution do we have? Well, that's kind of this here. We, we figure out what we have for given. What kind of test are we using? That's where this is useful. We, we, the distribution will tell us what kind of test we have. So because we know the population standard deviation, they tell us it's right here. The population standard deviation is 2.1 years. All right. So that tells us it's normally distributed. Okay, we're going to do a Z test. So therefore, this is going to be normal. We have to have our mean and our standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So we have 42 uh, is the sample size. This is the standard, this was the mean that we found. This is the mean we're testing. Okay, this is mu. So this was this is what's going to go here. We this is the mean that we're testing. The standard deviation is 22.1 divided by the square root of 42. Divided right by the square root of 42. And so we get this value here. All right, that's where those things came. Even though they told us what the sample mean and sample standard deviation are, we don't care what the sample standard deviation is. We know the population one, that's what we use. Which test do we have? Well, we know this is normal. 
we don't have a t distribution. We have a, a, a normal distribution, so that's why we're using z. Okay, and they ask us what the test statistic is. Well, we'll get back to that. We don't have to worry about calculating it. The, the calculator will do all of this. Um, and we don't really care what it is anyway. We really care what the p-value is. So to get all of that information, we go to stat and tests. And this is a z-test. So it's the first one. This not a, we have a proportions, and it's going to be the one proportion z-test. We have a single sample, and it's normally distributed, so it's a z-test. We have statistics. Our mean was 19. Our standard deviation is 2.1. And it's the standard deviation, not this value. It will calculate that thing for us. What is x bar? 18.1. What is the sample size? 42. What is our alternative hypothesis? So that's this one here. We have less than. So we have to come over here oops, and tell it that we have less than. So you highlight it, hit enter. What do we want to do? We just want to calculate it. We don't want to draw it. So we hit calculate. It gives us our value. Here is our z, our z statistic, two point, negative 2.7776. Four, six, so they want two places. So that's where that came from. This is our p-value, 0 0.0027. All right. Well, now what does it mean? So this is the probability of getting a sample, immediate, a sample mean of 18.1 if 19 is the true population mean. So this is a very small chance of this occurring. Okay. So if we turn this into a decimal, it's 0.27% chance of occurring. All right, and that's what it means. So if HO is true, if the mean population mean is 19, then there's a chance equal to that of the p-value. This is just horrible wording, but that's um, that the average age of, eight, of people when they first begin smoking is. So it's the chance of get finding. 42 people had a mean age of 18.1 if teen is the actual average age that people smoke. Okay, so more likely it's going to be less than that. So that's why, that's how that comes out because it's a small chance. Which one is the graph? Well, you only have one that has less than, so um, because this is the alternative, right? We don't have two sides. It's not greater than, and it's not again. It's not two sides. So there's only one option. If it was greater than, we would choose this one. If it was not equal to, we would choose this one. So it's going to be one of these three graphs. You just have to match it up to the B here. What do you have less than? So less than is on that side. So that's why it's this value. Kind of a dumb question. Useful, but they are really bad at it. What was alpha? Well, they told us alpha is 5%. So that's why that goes there. What are we going to do? Well, if our p value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. If it's not less than alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So if they're equal, we don't reject the null hypothesis. Right? So if we had gotten a 0 0.05 here, we would not reject. If we get 0.5 or better, we do not reject. Excuse me. If we have less than 0 0.05, which we do, because 0, 0, 0.002, then we reject the null hypothesis. Why? Well, these are backwards to me. Since alpha is less than point is alpha is greater than the p value, we reject. Well, that's why that should go here, and then we did make the decision because we did this first. And I always look at it the other way around p value should be over here, and alpha should be over here, but that's just me. What does it mean? Okay, well, there's enough evidence to conclude that the starting age of smoking is less than 19. Okay, so we're rejecting the null hypothesis. So 
we believe that wrong problem. We believe that this might be true. So it, this says mean is less than 19. That's where the conclusion lies. And then they want you to do a 95% confidence interval, which we did last week. And the reason we do that is because when we get our values, notice 19 isn't in the range. So it's kind of like a check. All right. So with this sample size and the, the, the sample mean we have, and the population standard deviation, we believe the range of people starting to smoke is really between 17 and a half and 18 and three quarters. 19 is not in that range group, is not in that range. So therefore, it makes sense that we reject the null hypothesis. People start smoking younger than 19. Not a lot necessarily a lot younger than 19, but they start smoking before they turn 19. And definitely not way after they turn 19. Any questions on any one of those little pieces? I may have gone a little fast, but they kind of all fall in together, so that's why like I, I kind of go through them. Yeah. Okay. All right. This one here. Um, we have sample data. So, where is it? So, when we were in tests, notice we have data and we have statistics. If they've given us the numbers, that like the mean, all this stuff, that's data. Sorry, that's statistics. If they give us a list of values, that's going to be used as data. So even if we calculate what those things are, we would still be rather use the real data because it hasn't been rounded at all. Sorry. I woke up early this morning and then couldn't really fall back to sleep. So um, we want to make sure that we use data. And I'll show you what it looks like. This is, We're not going to do a Z test. but so. All we, we put in data here, it's still going to ask us for the population mean and the population standard deviation, and then go forward if we're doing a z-test. If we're doing a t-test, it asks us again just for, then it just asks us for the mean because it's going to use the sample standard deviation anyway. And usually if we have data, we're probably going to use a t-test because we probably don't know the population standard deviation. And in real life, we almost never know the population standard deviation. So um, we're more likely to do t-tests than z-tests. And then it asks us where is the list and has a frequency of 1. So this, that's going to be the difference between these two. And we have to put this data in first. So uh, mean number of sick days an employee takes per year is believed to be about 10. All right. Um, members of personnel department do not think it's true. All right. So they're not saying whether they think it's higher or lower. They just think that 10 is wrong. So that's why I, you can kind of see in a practical way why having equal to and not equal to is useless because they think it's less than 10. They think it's more than 10. <laughs> that's what we would care about like if we're running a business. If I think it's less than 10, I can lower my number of sick days that I give out. If I think it's more than 10, I'll probably leave it at 10 and go, well, you know what? Your SOL for the other three days that you happen to be sick, I'm giving that 10 days is two weeks. That's more than enough sick time for me to be giving out to you guys. You can, if you use, if you need more, you use your vacation time. So they survey eight employees. Is this a good enough sample size? We don't know. Probably not. Um, but you know, it all depends upon the size of the company. If there's like, know 10,000 people then eight probably isn't enough if there's 100 people or that's that's probably not a bad sample or 80 people you have 10% of your population that's pretty good probably so this may or may not be a good sample size we don't have no idea uh, the number of sick days they took for the year were as follows 10 5 13 4 9 10 6 and 9 okay so we're gonna go to set we're going to enter this information. I'll put it in here. Remember, if there's stuff in here, you go highlight up the list one. 
hit clear, enter, if it goes away, and then 10, 5, 13, 4, 9, and 6, and 9. So I have my data in. Okay. X is the number of sick days they took. Should the personnel team believe the mean number is about 10? At 5% level significance. So about 10 is is it equal to 10 or not? Because they think that, it, like I said, they think that it's not true. So they have no idea of knowing whether they care if it's higher or lower, but they don't think 10 is right. So because they don't think 10 is right, they're saying, well, it might, it's not equal to 10. So we have equals 10 and not equals to 10. So if they had said, they think it's higher than 10, then that would have given us that we would have the alternative is higher than 10, and the null hypothesis would have been less than or equal to, even though they'd said about 10 here. But because the alternative would have been higher, then we would have had to have everything else on the other side. What does X bar mean? Surprise, surprise. What is the distribution? Well, because we know nothing about the population standard deviations, we're going to be using a T distribution. And the other thing to notice is that it doesn't have the X bar equals and all that other stuff. So T. Remember, you have to use the subscript, so you go to functions, subscript, and then 8 minus 1 is 7. Like, if I were doing this, I would have written down what the mean was that they have, what the standard population is. Well, they didn't give us any of that. They just gave us data. They did give us the sample size. N is 8, so N minus 1 is 7. All right. Then they're asking us, well, what is the t val What is the t uh, statistic, and what is the p value? Well, to get those things, we're, we have our data. We have nothing else. We're going to go to stat tests, and this time we're going to go t test. We have data. The mean that we're testing is 10. Everything is in list one. Our null hypothesis is not equal to, and we're going to calculate. And here's where I get my value this is negative 1.643. Here's where I get my p value of 0 0.11144. Uh, here's my mean. Here's my standard deviation. So I have information about it now if I needed to, but they're not asking me those things. What does h, h what does the p value mean? It's well, if the mean is really 10, then there's a 14% uh, chance of getting the data that we had. Which one is the graph? Well, because we're doing not equal to, we use the not equal to one. What was the Well, they told us it was 0.05, so we plug that in. What are we going to do? Are we going to reject or not reject? Well, let's see. Since alpha is bigger, so 0.144 is bigger than 0.05, we don't reject the null hypothesis, so we don't reject the null hypothesis. It seems easy enough. What does that mean? Well, it means that there's not enough evidence to say that it's not 10. So we're not saying that it is 10, but we're not saying that it's not 10. So 10 is probably where we're going to stay. So this is where we have, so we either, we don't ever say that it's true. We can't say that all hypothesis is true because this is a sample, all right? But we can say that we we can, we can don't think that it's not true. <laughs> We're not rejecting it with the evidence that we have. So maybe we, we get a larger sample, you know, or maybe we do it again. Um, but for now, we don't think that it's true. So if we... We, we we don't think that it's not we don't think it's not true. So if I were then to ask you know two more people and I got a two and a three, well, I go back in and I could say okay well let's see what happens now if I add two more people I get a two and a three and then did my test again. And all that stuff is still the same. Well, now I have 0 0.03. So 
I reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so I do think that it's not now. So if we think if we did get a rejection, we can always go and get more people and say, well, is it true? Even if we do get a rejection, if it's close, we could go get more people and test it again and say, well, did, are we still rejecting? You know, if it's right near the if it's right near the value, but we can very easily get two more people. They could ask, you know, they don't have to ask anybody because they have this data anyway. They could just, and they probably have the whole company, so they could find out the whole thing if they really wanted to. Um, but they could very easily get more people to say, well, all right, is this true or not? Because we don't think it's ten, you know, we think it's more than ten. So. No, but they're not testing that they're just saying that it's not equal to which like i said is kind of dumb like you would probably say i think you think it's more than that and then go test that out or we think it's less than that and go test that out but you wouldn't say well it's one or the other and again they want you to make a confidence interval but just remember this is a test and we can see that 10 is in this range so it's somewhere between 5.7 and 10.7, so and it's in that range, so that's why we didn't reject the null hypothesis. Um. So this one here, they want you to do the whole thing. It's a proportion, so I'll, I'll show you how to do this one, and then I'll leave you to the last, actually, one problem. So that's not a lot. <laughs> this day is going by fast. Huh? We have one problem to do. Um, so we have a proportion here. Uh, over the last few decades, public health officials have examined a link between weight concerns and teen girls uh, smoking. Uh, they surveyed 273 random teens in Massachusetts. I had no idea why they picked Massachusetts. This is, book was written from teachers in California uh, between 12 and 15. And they're really hung up on smoking. Uh, and after four years, the girls were surveyed again. 63 said that they smoked uh, to stay thin. Is there evidence that more than 30% of teen girls smoke to stay thin? They smoke to stay cool. Everybody knows that smoking is cool. So, right? So, to do this test, we have a proportion. We go to one proportion Z test, which is number five. They're not asking us about anything else. They just want us to know if we reject or don't reject the null hypothesis. And notice there's a whole bunch of reasons why we might. Okay. Um, our proportion is 0.3. Our Samples, uh, our, our positives are 63. Our sample size is 273. So our X is 63. Our sample is 273. And more than, more than. Then we calculate. And all we care about is the P, P value. And now notice we have a couple of P values here. So the p-value we have is what is 60? Oh, okay. Um, so our p-value in this case is 0.993. Is that bigger or smaller than 0 0.05? Good, good. Excellent. Good guess. So because it's bigger, we don't reject. And then we have to, so we have don't reject, don't reject, don't reject. We have to see which one uh, is correct. So there is not enough sufficient evidence to conclude that more than 30% of the teens stay thin. There is sufficient evidence. Well, that can't be true because if there's sufficient evidence to uh, conclude that, we would reject. So that one can't be right. There is not sufficient evidence to conclude that less than 30%. Well, because we're dealing with more than, that's why this isn't right. So there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that more than 30, because this is going to be bounced around more than, greater than, uh, less than, at most, at least. 
Um, and so you're going to have like a bunch of different things that are you're already at different problems, but the math is going to stay the same. Now, the reason this is so big is because we have a negative value. And so it's it, it, like if we were doing less than, we would have a much different answer here. We, like, And I'll show you. So with same math. Yeah, man. <laughs> So less than, we get a 0 0.006. So there's enough evidence to, to show that less than 30% uh, of the population smoked to stay thin. They smoked for other reasons. Um, and so that, so that change, the p-value changes. The proportion didn't change. The... Hy the, what happened? What changed was the null hypothesis. The the T the Z statistic didn't change. What changed was the was what changed was the um, uh, null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis. And because that changed, it showed it changed which side we were had the um, rejection region on. And so therefore, we have a lot smaller p value than we did with the other one. And, and these two p values add up to one. So. Um, that's so if you ever go that seems like really large you probably put the, the uh um uh alternative hypothesis in backwards like you probably put in less than when it's supposed to be greater than or greater than when it's supposed to be less than um so if you ever see a number that's really close to one it's probably that but in this case there were what's changing is the null hypothesis the alternative hypothesis so um that's why this value is bouncing around, going to be one or the other. And so if we have this, then we do have enough uh, sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, so if we're dealing with less than, it's going to be uh, there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, and you just have to find that one. Um, and then the last one here is, again, a mean, um, where you're going to go through and there's lots of numbers in this one. Looks like uh, oh no, it's a proportion. Okay, so we have a proportion here. 68% uh, of online courses are um, in the community college system are taught by the faculty, full-time faculty, and they want to test to see if that's the same for state colleges, like universities. So. They found that 35 of the 44 online courses are taught by full-time faculty, and they want to do a hypothesis test. Well, this is a proportion, so you would do that again. I wish I had another one more problem where you had your own um, Z or T test, but I'm not going to add it now. I'll add it some other time for next year. Um, so you're going to do the same thing. It's going to be a proportion. And you're going to solve this and go through the math for that. So I'll, I did one. You can do the other. Um, but there's only there was only one Z test and one T test. So um, I probably want to put one more of each of those in there. You may want to do them again just so you can see how to do them. You know, you can always go through and, and practice them over and over again. Uh, the difference is, remember, Z tests for mean, you have the population standard deviation. T tests, you don't. So it's either data that they've given you, but if they give you data and the, the population standard deviation, you're going to do a Z test. So that's the big thing. This one here did not have any uh, population standard deviation, so that's why you're doing a T test. Um, and then problem one here is just coming up with a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of hypotheses, null and alternative hypotheses. So. And it's 10 o'clock. That was a quick day. Uh, do we have, does everybody have questions about any of that stuff? Or chapter six or seven or eight? Since you have tests on those two things. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so, um, like I said, the test will open at noon today. Um, you know, you can. Watch it during. The, you can do it during the football game tomorrow because obviously it's going to be a, a blowout and uh, nobody cares what stats are going to lose. So um, 
Uh, I, you know, although, yeah, yeah, the Pats are probably gonna lose. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the, there's not a lot to do. Like, even though there's seven problems and like they're kind of fast to do because once you put the can in the, it's really just putting things into the calculator. Um, there's not a lot of stuff to actually, it's just making the decision of I'm gonna, which test are you going to do? Are you doing a Z test, a T test, or a one proportion Z test? Once you get those ideas out it's really just kind of filling in um i was watching it good idea um it's it's then what you know which what are the pieces well you know if you if you remember if you do it you're thinking you're doing a z test and it's supposed to be a proportion there is no standard deviation so that's a key you know, because people always for some reason go i couldn't find where to put the standard deviation well well you there wasn't a place to put the standard deviation because there isn't one. It's a proportion. Um, so that's kind of one of the keys. You know, which mean do you have? So if I have stats, it's going to ask me about not only it's going to ask me about the population mean. That's the thing we're testing. The population standard deviation. That's the thing that was given. The sample mean, which is given, and the sample size. If I have a, oops. A t test. I have statistics. It's the population mean that we're testing. The I just did z test again. Okay, it's the population mean we're testing, the sample mean we're testing, the sample standard deviation. I, I don't know why they change the order on these things, but they do. So if you have a t test. The, the the means come first, then the standard deviation. If you have a population, if you're doing a z-test, it has the population mean, and the population standard deviation, then the sample mean, and then the sample size. And then the next line is always which kind of alternative do you have, and then we just do calculate. So, um, like you could do draw, but it's usually not very helpful. Um, so I would bother ever doing the draw. <laughs> and then if you have a proportion, it's the number five here. One proportion is Z test. There's the word proportion in it. It asks, what is the proportion that we're testing? How many successes did we have? How many trials did we have? What is the alternative? Is it greater than, less than, or not equal to? And then calculate. And it will give you all those little pieces. And so it's always going to be those things. Um, I think, let me just make a uh, check something. I, there may be more in the, like if you go to the book. Wrong book, wrong button. You're in the way button. I love how they try to help you out, and you're like, I don't need that. Examples, homework. So here's a, a bunch more problems that you could do. Um, and you can see the solution, generation, generate. This is the smoking one. Then <laughs> uh, they don't show the solutions on other ones, so they're not helpful. Um, but so here's one that has a solution. Uh, here's one that has a solution. Some of the solutions, anyway. I'm not quite sure where the. Oh, the the questions are all of these each time. I think. So those are just samples. Um, type one and type two. Uh, yeah, practice another exactly. 
So but I'm just saying. So like, if you want to read some, try some other ones that that you know that aren't showing up. These are different problems. So this doesn't have all the solutions, but it has the things that we care about. It has the decision. Of what are you going to do? Reject or not reject? So you can kind of go through the rest. It does, it doesn't ask tell you what the null and alternatives are, but we can kind of figure that out as we go along. Um, and so there's a bunch on here. So those are kind of useful. Um, I did use, I did like this. This was kind of a cool thing. Um, this is like originally I had people make their own tests. Yeah, I knew, um, and I got it from the fact that like she had people um, write poems that had um, hypothesis tests in them. And so you have to pull the you have to pull the hypothesis test out of the poem, which I think is kind of cool. Um, so you may want to look at some of these, uh, and they're, they're actually not bad poems either, so they're kind of interesting. Um, this one's about uh, Dalmatian, the 101 Dalmatians and the spots. Uh, and so you get a macaroni and cheese. Um, this one doesn't have the problem in it, the solutions. Um, but it does have, they are kind of funny. I, I, I think they're kind of interesting. and. You can then uh, test yourself on these, so they're because they're kind of cool. Um, I don't don't have any in the in the homework thing because they're just too long to read. Um, but I do like them. You'll have to put one of the, a couple of those in um, for next time. So you can look through the homework in the book, and she does have the solutions for some of them. So you can easily decide whether you're supposed to reject or not reject, and test yourself on those as well. Um, because yeah, you'll see this. You can do the, you can do, redo the problem, but all it does is just change the numbers. And on um, this one here, where is it? On this one here, it's only going to change this from more than to less than. So it. There's not anything new to do in this problem. This one will at least, and this one, there's the only number that's going to change is this. So that will change and do a little bit of difference. Um, where is the beginning of the problem? So these numbers would change. Uh, here, the sample sizes are going to change, and the sample mean would change. Um, so you you can do those, but they'll keep those same numbers. Like the new, if you do the ones in the, in that were from the book, you'll actually see other problems. So you have to pull out your information, different information. So it'll be a little bit, you know, it's a little bit more, a little more challenging to do these, um, just because like you have to pull out all. The, like it's not, I haven't done them for you, and you haven't done it already. So like they're only changing. And some of those were only changing like one or two numbers. Here you have a whole bunch of new numbers to work with. And so you have to decide whether it's a T distribution, a Z distribution, whether it's a sample, if you have the data, or if you have um, the statistics already. So it, it gives you those kinds of tests so you can test yourself on that stuff as well. So these are kind of useful for that. And I can't believe I didn't care. I'm just going to copy this and I'll put this right into the. Um, web link. Uh, I even spoke that from right. Yay. Who knew? So it's at the very bottom right here. Um, so you can try that, and this will bring you to WebAssign. This one will bring you to the text. Oh, I did spell text wrong. I uh, put an extra R in it. It's a silent R. Yeah. For those of you who don't like the silent R, four ends in a silent Q. Um, so this allows you to um, get some more problems for yourself to do. All right. Any questions or suggestions or you got anybody doing trick or treating or having you parties? That... Sending my homework from last week. Oh sure. Um, I don't know who just said that though. So. It's Beatrice. Thank you. Uh, who was it? Beatrice. 
Oh, okay. Uh, more view because I can't do it from anywhere else. Beatrice, Beatrice, right? I hear Beatrice. I heard this. Some of yeah. it was Beatrice. <laughs> uh, last week was chapter. What was last week? Chapter seven. Seven. Okay. And I'll do eight too while I'm here, just so. Uh, calendar. October, going to November. Well done. You were good to go. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else need anything? So remember the test. I do. Yeah. Yes. I did. Um, I asked him to send. Yeah, I thought I did those, Diana. Or maybe did I do it for uh, Robles or for, for Waverly? I think I always do that. I, I see the last name and I, I grab the first. I, 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 I think I did it for Waverly instead of you. Because <laughs> I just look at the name and I go, oh, all right, that's that's the one I've got to, I've got to fix. So, because um, I just look at the first, I look at the last, I go up to see the, I saw Robles and I looked, at, I get, grabbed the last name and that was, I think that was what I, I, I tend to give it to the wrong person for you guys. Um, chapters seven. Okay. Then you're good. Thank you. Um, well, uh, so remember, on the test, you have three tries per question. Uh, uh, and there's no time limit. It's 25 questions from chapters 6, 7, and 8. Um, I can't think of anything. There's no time limit. But like I said, you know, give yourself two hours of, un of uninterrupted uh, time. You know, you know, Dogs and children and and husbands aren't bothering husbands and wives aren't bothering you, um, so that way you can you know be, it can be in a quiet space. So yeah, there's uh, nine questions from chapter six, eight questions from chapter seven, and eight questions from chapter eight. So, um, I don't know how, like, two, 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 ten, 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 two, five, five, two hundred fifty. So I have no idea how that they come up with that one. Like, it, it always, like, there's always one thousand eighty-four minutes. I don't think it's possible to spend a thousand minutes on a single problem. Um, obviously, you know, one hundred and seventy-five minutes. So obviously, those don't make any sense whatsoever. So the test probably should take you. Um, Let's say the longest question, five minutes. So uh, most of these are two. So there's probably like 18 minutes there. Um, probably we'll, we'll say 40 minutes on, on that. So that's an hour. And then this one looks like, you know, maybe uh, 20 minutes. So an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half. You know, probably. So if it's if it's taking you three hours, you know you you need you know something's wrong. Um, but that's okay. I'd rather have you spend three hours and you're looking up stuff and trying to figure it out than fail. Um, but if it's taking you a thousand minutes to answer a question, something is wrong. <laughs> like it should not take you a thousand minutes for a single question. Like I don't know how that happens. I, like, but I, I just look at those sometimes and go. How did they get those numbers? Like, what could possibly have happened in to get those values? So, um, we should be—you guys all should be good. Remember, you have until 
next Monday to get this done. Um, so go vote. I don't care who you vote for, just vote. Um, so it's not due until the 9th? Correct. It's, it's not until midnight the 9th. Okay. All right. Um, so somewhere in here I have the schedule. Uh, future. Midnight, November 9th. 11.59, it has to be in before, okay? So you have plenty of time to do that. And then the next one will be open up on the 23rd, so we'll probably be starting it um, nine days before that, if I do eight days. So probably like the 15th or something like that? October, uh, yeah, so it probably opens on the 15th. So we're getting there. We have two more weeks and then it's gonna open. Um, I'll probably I can move it to the 14th noon on the 14th for you guys, um, but it's due after. No, that's not Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Is, no, it's due after Thanksgiving, isn't it? One, two, three. No, but right before Thanksgiving. So um, it'll be due the 23rd, and then the third test. Oh, that is the third test, and then the fourth test is due in December. So that's on chapters uh, 11 and 13. After we finish those, so um, you notice here there's a big break in time <laughs> between these two things being due. Uh, so, I'm sorry, the chapter uh, test four is due the last day of class, the 19th of December. Unfortunately, there's no way to speed that up. Uh, and if there's an A, there's no final. Correct. All right. Uh, what's that? Is there a project? Uh, that that's the that the final is the project. It's the final project. So if you think you need to do it, remember it's in the final. It's already open. Okay, you can go to weekly work. It's at the very bottom of the page. If you think you're not going to get an A, you might as well start it now. <laughs> so it's um, the final project right here. You have to. Uh, here they are. Climate change data, and here's the final project. You have to go through this data, do a sample, explain what. So you can do the first part already. You already know how to do all of that. Uh, you do a sample. You get the mean, the median, the mode, the standard deviation. Make a box plot. Make a histogram. Um, you uh, you're picking two options. You have to do it for both of those. Explain why you chose those. Explain how you did your sample. Um, are there any outliers? Um, I can't think of anything else that's in there at the moment, but it's like there's like a bunch of options. Right, so here they are. Um, so why did you do it? Why did you pick the two things you picked? What, give me all the data from that you've served that you your sample site your your entire sample. So you're gonna pick sample 60 things. Just give me your your data that you've got. Uh, make a frequency table. Make a histogram. Uh, make a um, why like how did you choose the classes? So the bin sizes for your histogram and for your your frequency table. Um, how Choosing different ones change your histogram. So, like, if you if you changed your bin sizes, how would it, how would your histogram change? Uh, what is the uh, shape? Is it left skewed? Is it right skewed? Is it um, is it uniform? Is it like there's no real thing going on? Is it normally distributed? Um, what is the mean, median, mode? Give me the five number summary. You know, so the quartiles. Uh, make a box plot. Um, and what is the range? Are there any modes? So symmetry, skewness, all that stuff here came from previous things. Is there an outlier? So those are all things. So you could do these. You could have done this week four. <laughs> By week four, week three, we've done all that stuff. Section two has to do with um, doing a uh, regression, which we haven't learned yet. This is chapter 12. And chapter uh, section three is doing um, a uh, hypothesis test for on the two things. Um, 
information on one of the things based upon whether it's high or low income. And we're going to learn how to do this next week. So you can get this part done after next week. So before, okay. test, before test three happens, you can have two parts of the final all done. So you'll know, you'll know by, you know. The final project. What was that, uh, Sean? That's not the final exam. It's the final project. It's the final project, exactly. Okay. So you'll know, like, after you take test two, if you're like, ah, I have like a, a C average, you might as well start working on the final. <laughs> You know, you know, get that done, and and you can get those pieces done and out of the way. If you have, if you have a, a plus a minus, you're like, maybe I'll start it just in case, you know. But like, and if you have an A, you're like, I think I'll probably get an A the rest of the way. So, you, I mean, again, you can still start it and then go at test four. You're like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I've got this covered. I'm, I'm all set. Um, but you know, then don't do it. You know, like when you get to test three, because unfortunately test four is not due until the last day of school, just like the final. So, um, you know, you kind of have to decide, are you in that spot? Um, obviously, if you're, if you have an A in test three, you're probably good enough, you know, because um, uh, you'll, you'll probably be, due, you'll probably be fine and, and won't need it. But if you don't have an A at test three, you definitely need to be taking, you finish the final. So if you look in test two and you're nowhere near an A, might as well start it, you know, this week. <laughs> so, all right. Does that make sense to people? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Everybody have a good weekend. Enjoy your Halloween. Oh, I'm gonna. I have uh, nothing to do. We're gonna stay at home and watch Hallmark movies. <laughs> no, horror movies. No, no. Uh, can I also get an extension on A? Sure. I actually requested an extension as well. You did? Okay. On what, chap on what chapter, Sean? Eight. Eight. Okay. Uh, wrong button. Oh, I'm, not, I'm in the roster. I'm not even in the, the right thing. I wish there was an easy way to do this, but there, there isn't. <laughs> uh, technology. Uh, when do you update grades on Blackboard? Uh, usually after the next test, I'll update grades again. Uh, Sean, what's your last name? Theo. I'm like, I'm like, I should know this, but I can't. I'm you like, should. I'm like, my, my brain's not working, so. I give it for you for seven, too. Thank you. Um, all right, everybody. Oh, here's some stuff in here. I have some messages. Beatrice, oh. chapter seven. I think I just did those, so I am good to go. I'll move those to answered. I got to actually click on them and, and move mark them as answered. It's annoying. It should be a thing. I answered them before without having to, to read them. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. Have a nice week. You guys have a great weekend as well. Um, I will see you all next week, and I'll stop recording. Is Tuxbury actually doing Halloween? Yeah, but we don't get anybody anyway. Like in the 15, 16, 17 years we've lived here, I think we've had maybe 20 kids, and that's because the kid across the street is friends with my son. So, <laughs> so he comes every year. Like we're not, they're not doing trick or treating this year, so we'll have nobody. <laughs> Honestly, they used to they used to cap them in drive uh, into my neighborhood. Yeah. And we get nobody ever. 
because we're right on the main, we're right on one of the busy streets. We don't have a sidewalk, so it's not safe to walk on the street. So kids don't tend to do it. No, okay. I live on I live on cul de sac, so. Yeah, see, we don't we live right on the main street. <laughs> okay, so have a great week. You too, guys. Bye bye.